So we start with today's notes by writing the equation of a perpendicular bisector. The name of that segment tells me a lot about what I need in order to write the equation. If it's a bisector, so in this case, CD is our perpendicular bisector. So what that means is that CD, uh, CD is going to be drawn so that it intersects AB at a 90 degree angle. And the bisector piece means that M is a midpoint. So our blank, AB is perpendicular to CD at M, which is the midpoint of AB. Remember, the three dots mean therefore, so it says therefore M is on A, B, and C, D. It's on both of the lines. And the slopes of A, B, and C, D, if they're perpendicular, the slopes are negative reciprocals. So this piece here is important. That point, M, is on both of the lines. So I'm going to be, or what we're going to do in the first example, is write the equation of that line. And if I'm writing the equation, since M is on both, that's going to be your x1, y1 in the point-slope equation. The slope is going to be the negative reciprocal of your given line. I would encourage you always to draw a picture when given a problem in words. So in the first example, it says find the equation of a line that's the perpendicular bisector of PQ. Now, and this is a sketch. My sketch of PQ does not represent or give a true representation because if you look, your x coordinates do not match, the y coordinates do not match. So it's not going to be a horizontal or vertical line. It's going to be a slanted line. But in my sketch, I'm just drawing a picture to help me solve it. So a, the perpendicular bisector of PQ has to go right through the midpoint and be drawn so that it intersects at a 90 degree angle. So if I'm given the coordinates of PQ, the first thing I want to do is find the midpoint of PQ. Because that will give me a point that's not only on PQ, but it's on the perpendicular bisector. So first, the midpoint of PQ equals Average of the x's, average of the y's. So negative 5 plus 3 over 2, 3 plus 7 over 2. So I end up with a sum of negative 2 divided by 2 and 10 over 2, which is the midpoint negative 1, 5. So I know that this point is on this green line, negative 1, 5. So I know my x1, y1. What I'm missing is the slope. So since we're given coordinates of PQ, we can find the slope of PQ and then take its negative reciprocal for the bisector. So number two, we want to find the slope of PQ. So for PQ, our slope is change of i over change of x. So 7 minus 3 divided by 3 minus a negative 5. So we get 4 divided by 8, which is 1 half. Now for the perpendicular bisector, the slope's going to be the negative reciprocal. So if I flip and negate 1 half, it becomes negative 2 over 1, or just negative 2. 
Now let's plug in this slope and our point into that equation. So just like last class, y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1 with the midpoint and the slope of negative 2. So it's going to be y minus 5 equals m times x minus x1. Don't forget the negative because that negative, when I subtract a negative, that changes to a positive. Distributing, we've got negative 2x minus 2. We have to add the 5 over. So we got y equals negative 2x plus 3. That is the equation of this perpendicular bisector. So the next type of question you're going to see to finish the unit deals with collinear points. I have, uh, as a review, recall that any number of points that are collinear lie on the same line, okay? And if they do all lie in the same line, that means they all have the same slope. So A, B, and C are collinear if the slope of A, B equals the slope of BC. So if they have the same slope, they're on the same line. If they don't have the same slope, you might have from BC a curve in your line. Or not necessarily a curve, but a rigid turn. So they're not going to be on the same line if they have a different slope. So in this question, number two, it says find the value of K, or X in this case, for which these three points are collinear. So that means the slope of these two points should be the same as the slope of those two points. So plugging into the slope formula, y minus y1 would be 1 minus negative 1 over 2 minus x. That slope must be the same as the slope of my second two, or the second and third. So 5 minus 1 over 4 minus 2. 5 minus 1 is 4. 4 minus 2 is 2. Now I realize you can reduce that to 2 over 1, so it's up to you. You can reduce it to 2 over 1 or keep it. I'm going to keep it. 1 minus, uh, again, subtracting a negative turns it to addition. So we have 2 over 2 minus x. We solve a proportion using the cross multiplication or cross product. So 2 times 2, I'm going to move that up here, which is 4, equals 4 times 2 minus x. So 4 times 2 is 8, 4 times negative x is negative 4x. Solve for x by subtracting 8, dividing by negative 4, x equals 1. On the back side, partitioning a directed line segment. A directed line segment means it has a specific direction. Okay? It has a starting point it has an ending point. You have to pay close attention to where they say it starts and where it ends. In this first bullet, a directed line segment from A to point B would be written as AB. If it was switched from point B, 2 point A, that would be the segment BA. So the order is very important of your letters. Okay? Let's graph this first one on the grid. So if I wanted the directed line segment AB, A would be your starting point and B would be the ending point. If you're going to partition that segment, all it means when you partition is that you're going to divide it up. Okay? Whatever the given ratio is, like we did in our warm-up. So, if I start here and end here, 
what we're going to use as far as a mathematical formula to help us, if you were telling someone how to walk from here to here, so think about being in the city, the number of blocks. Walk this many blocks north, and then walk this many blocks east, if, we're, if we look at the compass. So you look at how many blocks you go up and over, or how many you go over and up. What in math do we use that tells us how many you go up and over? Slope. So we use slope. So our slope is change of y over change of x. So in this picture, here's our change of y, here's the change of x. So if I wanted to go 3 fifths, my ratio is 3 to 2. 3 fifths of the way, instead of going up, however many, I would go 3, four, or three fifths up, three fifths over, that's going to be my new point. Okay? Well, we don't know what that is until they tell us. So in number three, let's first start by plotting our points. What are the coordinates of the point on the directed line segment? So from K, that's our starting point, to L, that partitions in the ratio three to two. Well, given a grid that has an axis labeled, you should add your scale. So I'm going to plot these two points and then connect them with a segment. So there's the segment, KL. Now I'm going to break it up into a ratio of 3 to 2. So what that means, don't draw this on your piece of paper, I want to split this up into how many segments total? Five. So if I just sketch 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, that's what I don't put those lines on there because I don't know if they're perfect. That's what I want to do. We're going to find that point that actually does that. So Instead of, in this case, if I'm using slope, rise is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Run is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So what's my slope? So change of y over change of x is rise 5 over 10. What does that reduce to? Now, if you reduce it, so off to the side here in a little bubble, if you reduce, it reduces to one half. So you can see, because some questions on the regions will say the use of the accompanying grid is optional. So you can use the grid and do everything on the graph. If I do a slope of one half, will that break it up into five segments? Go up one over two, there's one segment. Up one over two, up one over two, up one over two, up one over two. Did that break it up into five? Yeah, then you can do it graphically. If you can use the given slope and break it up into however many segments you need to break it up into, then you can use slope. So however, now where is the point that would break it up into three to two? Well, I need one, two, three segments to 1, 2, so this must be the point right here, whose coordinates are what? 1, negative 1. If you can do it graphically and they say you can use a graph, that's the shortest way to do it. If you can't, okay, going back to here, I need to break it up in the ratio of 3 to 2, so that's 3 fifths of the way from K to L. So what you do is you take three-fifths of the numerator, your change in Y. Does anyone know what three-fifths of five is? Cancel those out, you get three. And then take three-fifths of ten, cancel those out, three times two is six. 
to finish this problem, if you had to do it by hand, you would take your original point, so k, which is negative 5, negative 4, and I would add the 6 to the x or the y value down below. x, yeah, so add the 6, and then the 3 I would add to the y. You see, when you add 6 and add 3, you get 1, negative 1, the same answer if you do it by the graph. So we're going to do one more example, and as I mentioned, it's easier to do it using the graph. So let's see in number 4 if we can do this question and using the grid. So again, 6 by 6. J, negative 2, negative 5, negative 2, positive 5, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3 is K. So when using the graph, I go down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 7, 8, and over 1, 2, 3, 4. So in using a graph, 8 over 4 reduces to 2 over 1. So if I go down 2, grab orange, if I go down 2 over 1, down 2 over 1, down 2 over 1, down 2 over 1, did that break it up into 5 segments? the ratio was 4 to 1. So that means it's a total of 5 segments. The graph did not, so we have to do it by hand. Because not, there will be some cases where your answer is not integral. So the x is not an integer, the y is an integer. In this case, our x and y values, I think, are both in terms of a fraction. So let's do this by hand. So in this case, we can't use the graph. I'm going to put my points back on there. So we have to show the work algebraically. So change of y, and I only note this so I don't forget what values to add to the x and add to the y. And am I going to add the these values I get, am I going to add them to J or to K? Where's my starting point? J. So I got to go back and add the numbers I get to J. So again, we found the slope, we counted it. If you show the math, change of Y, change of X is negative 8 over 4, which is negative 2 over 1. It was a negative slope. Um, you don't want to reduce when you're doing it by hand. Okay, you want to leave it there because that's the total distance that you're going down and over. So now, with those numbers, if I'm going to do a ratio of 4 to 1, I go 4 fifths of the total distance. So multiplying this times 4 fifths, and we're going to do some practice with fractions so please leave everything in terms of a fraction and not write the decimals. So this is negative 32 over 5, and this is 16 over 5. We said we were going to add them to J. So J is negative 2 fifths. I'm going to write it across instead of up and down like I did before because I'm running out of room. So I'm going to add, or in this case, because it's negative, when you add a negative, it's the same thing as subtraction. So I'm going to subtract. Ooh, I almost made a mistake. I shouldn't be subtracting that from the x, right? I should be subtracting that from the y. So be careful. So I got to subtract from the 5, negative 32 fifths. And then to the 2, which is the x, I'm going to add 16 fifths.
Common denominators for fractions. This is currently over 1, so if I want to change it to a denominator of 5, I multiply by 5. So this is negative 10 fifths plus 16 fifths. This is over 1, so times 5 times 5. This would be 25 fifths minus 32 fifths. So as a fraction, combining the numerators, negative 10 plus 16 is 6, so it's 6 fifths. And then 25 minus 32 is negative 7 fifths. I'm going to give you the formula for this. I would suggest you do it as we did. We just did both those questions without a formula, but some of you like formulas. So the formula would be given ratio A over B. You take the X1 coordinate and you add that ratio of the slope, which is X2 minus X1. And then you take your y coordinate and you add that ratio times your slope, change of y over change of x for your y values. So that's the formula given the ratio a over b. But I would suggest you just do it graphically, absolutely. If you can do it graphically, do it graphically. It's the easiest way to do it and you get full credit. Okay? So if I don't on my test give you a grid, I'll give you everyone scrap paper. So you can always graph it on a separate sheet of paper if that's easiest. But if you can't do it graphically, you have to do it by hand. For the construction, I, I suggest you give yourself some room. Okay? So if you have papers underneath, you might want to get rid of those. And to construct, and I'm going to explain this after we draw. Step number one, draw any ray ax so that we have an acute angle. So let's draw that and then I want to explain steps two through four. So using your ruler, you want to draw a ray that gives you an acute angle with this segment. Now the only time you need to be labeling with all the vertices, the letters that we do, is only in your notes, okay? Let's look at steps two through four. They all say draw a circle, okay? We're no longer drawing circles. You can draw circles, but we switched. But when you're giving someone directions, how do you tell them exactly what to draw? Instead of saying draw an arc, we say draw a circle. Note, the first circle, I just want you to watch for a second, has center A. That's the end point that we have. We draw a circle and label its intersection as P. Then we draw a circle P. Label that intersection Q. Then we draw a circle Q. Label that intersection R. They all have the radius AP. So what you're doing with your compass is you're opening it up with the compass point at a, and we're going to draw three arcs, not the full circle. But why three? Our direction said to construct point L on the segment AB, so the ratio is two to one. So that means you're going to have a total of three segments. If you had a total of five segments, you do five arcs. A total of four segments, you do four arcs. So with your compass point at P, we're going to draw with the same radius, one, we'll slide it up, two, three. And told us to label this pens misbehaving. P, Q, R. Next step is to draw segment RB. So anytime you're doing this construction, as soon as you make that last arc, 
you take and connect that point to the end point. So after you make your arcs, you connect the segment, and this says to draw a line parallel to RB through Q. So let's look at why it's Q. We can draw a parallel line through Q. We've done parallel line construction before. But why Q? Because Q has divided our given ray into a ratio 2 to 1, correct? So then, that's why we pick Q, is because wherever that, don't draw this line, crosses here, that's going to be the point. But we have to construct it. So parallel line construction is to make an arc at R. I'm going to copy this angle at Q. So I make an arc here. And then I make it at Q. Now I measure the width of that angle. I'm going to measure it from my transversal. So I'm going to measure the width by opening it up to each side of that arc. So I make a point or an arc line there. And then I make the same arc at its respective location below. And then using your straight edge, you're going to draw a straight line through this point and Q. And you can draw it straight through so that it intersects AB. So using the line tool, it's got to go through both points. So right here. And on my line, if we go back up to the directions, it's said to construct point L. So on that line, I would put L. And let's just make a note that these two lines have to be parallel, so we did the parallel line construction. So now on AB, I've just broken up AB so that this ratio was 2 to 1. You want to see how good we did? Don't make the marks. You can if you want. But if I line up my compass at B, so if I want to check to see how good I did, I'm going to measure BL. So it's right there. Let's see how good I did. So if I make an arc there, this should be two of those. So let's put it precise. I'm way off, huh? Should be double this. One here should be, I could be a little bit more over, but it should be double that there. So mine was off, okay? Um, but with all the marks that I have, I would get full credit, and I'll stop and see how you guys did.